Reanimation. Beginning as a magician's slate of hand and evolving into a multi-million dollar film franchise, animation has grown since its start in the golden age of the 1930s. However, animation has provided much more than entertainment for its viewing audience. During this age, animation proved that it can not only attract an audience, but reflect the views and opinions of American citizens. More than just a series of drawings meant to imitate life, the growth of the animation enterprise, along with the advent of the comic book industry, had a significant part in supporting America through some of its most typical hours. Here, I am referring to propaganda illustration and animation. In the late 1930s, the success of both animated films and the sale of comic books reached new acclaim. Walt Disney had just released Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs to positive reception, while Action Comics had released their first issue featuring Superman, who would go on to become an American icon. Due to this success, both animators and comic illustrators were commissioned to make comic strips and animated shorts to promote the sale of war bonds during the conflict of World War II. While initially taking on the task to support the nation's well-being, as well as further promoting their own work, these projects eventually became new means for these artists to express their opinions on the war situation, something they had never intended. The propaganda in itself became artistic expression, which actually began to take place before war was ever declared. In 1939, when America was still mutual to the European conflict, Walt Disney Studios released a short film, Ferdinand the Bull, based upon the children's book of the same name by Monroe Lee. While not explicitly stating so, the film contains a constant theme of pacifism, as the plot revolves around a bull who chooses to be peaceful, unlike his more hostile brethren. The author of the original story, Monroe Leaf, claims that he first wrote the story in response to the Spanish Civil War that had occurred at the time. The film version of Ferdinand, however, was not necessarily made with the intention of garnering anti-war support, but the idea of the film being released as America was on the verge of war is not merely a coincidence. However, as is always true with any able-bodied nation, pacifism was not every citizen's desired path. A notable example of this is Theodore Geisel, better known to the public by his pen name, Dr. Seuss. Geisel was noticeably pro-war, even before the events of Pearl Harbor, and released various political cartoons that conveyed his interventionist beliefs. Like with Ferdinand, though, this was less a statement of propaganda and more of a means of communicating judgments of political opinions to the public. However, these statements would grow to be less subtle as the overseas conflict grew to critical levels. America first entered the foray of war after the Japanese attacks on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, which would later go on to shape the mold of the American nation. As such, this would go on to have a significant effect on the animation and comic industries, which were still in their infancy in regards to the success of their respective businesses. Animators and illustrators seized this opportunity to get their work noticed, while also doing their part to raise moral for the war effort. One of the first notable shorts during this time was Bugs Bunny Bond Rally, a short featuring the now world-famous cartoon rabbit using song and dance to promote the sale of war bonds, which was coincidentally a theme that most propaganda shorts had during this time. While brief and not necessarily genius in its concept, this short still holds significance, as animation producer Tom Reich claims that it is because of this short that Bugs Bunny gained the public acclaim that launched him to his icon status. However, perhaps most well known out of any propaganda cartoon would have to be De Fuhrer Space, a 1942 short released by Walt Disney Studios that would go on to win the Oscar for Best Animated Short Film. The short features Disney regular Donald Duck in the fictionalized depiction of Nazi Germany, where he is a citizen who must work in horrible conditions to serve the Fuhrer, Adolf Hitler. The short is notable for giving an almost comedic look to the horrors of the Third Reich, which is in itself a propaganda technique that has apparently been rather successful given the short's claim to fame. The Fuhrer's face is not only notable for being the only World War II propaganda film to win an Academy Award, but also for bringing popularity to a propaganda song of the same name sung by Spike Jones that was used in the film. The song made its own popularity, being used in countless other propaganda mediums, such as television programs and radio broadcasts, to further support the effort. To the effective nature of the propaganda that was developed, the propaganda for the comic industry was developed in a different fashion. While both industries grew in this time by creating work to support the war effort, the comic business relied on different tactics to get their message across. Whereas cartoon characters rely on slapstick and humor to promote the war effort, comics would be superheroes, characters that could show an example of what kind of hero one could become by combating the Nazi threat. Not only that, but the characters and stories created by the comic industry for the sake of war propaganda have lasted much longer than their creators had originally intended. The most notable example of these heroes would have to be Captain America. The story of a frail man turned into an all-American super soldier was well received when his first appearance came in 1941 by Timely Comics, the predecessor to Marvel. Down in a red, white, and blue outfit and fighting for the same reason the US troops were fighting in Germany, Captain America served as both an effective vehicle for raising morale for the war effort, 
as well as giving Timely a new character to help promote sales. In fact, Captain America fared much better than I anticipated, as he still proves to be one of Marvel's most successful characters, as seen by the box office success of the most recent movie adaptations of the hero. While Captain America may have garnered some of his success from being a brightly colored superhero, there was a more important factor of the character. He was fighting a realistic threat in an environment that troops were fighting in as the comics were being written. In most instances, propaganda had achieved its goal of selling war bonds and raising morale through the use of romanticized depictions of the war. This method did prove effective, but it still neglected to show the public the truth behind the threat that was being fought overseas. As with all artistic expression, though, there were some exceptions amongst artists, such as the Willie and Joe comic strips written by Bill Malden. The strip featured two disgruntled war cadets, and was propaganda that was neither anti- or pro-war, but rather aimed to show what it was truly like to be a soldier within the war. Bill Malden himself had served in war previously, and the subsequent success of his comic proved that revealing the truth behind the war would not dissuade people from supporting the war effort as editors had previously feared. However, arguably the most frightening depiction of Nazi threat within propaganda remains Education for Death, a 1943 Disney short that highlights the transformation of a young innocent German boy into a ruthless Nazi soldier. While the short relies on a few techniques previously implemented in other a animated propaganda, such as using comedy to arouse ridicule for Hitler's methods, the short capitalizes on one concept, the danger and threat that truly lies within the Nazi party. The story revolves around stripping a young boy, one with innocence and a strong conscience, into a mindless drone of the Third Reich. It doesn't offer any advice or methods on how to do away with the threat, but rather illustrates the foe that we as a nation were put up against. Ultimately, the commissioning of animators and comic artists to create war propaganda proved to not only be a turning point in these artistic industries, but also in American history. It proved that American opinion, even on something as large as international war, was allowed to be expressed by people with varying opinions and in different manners and methods. Art was growing in America, which meant that tolerance, creativity, and expression were as well. While this propaganda boom was not something that was revolutionary to American history, it was a benchmark for the changing pace that America had embraced. It proved that we were, and still are, an ever-changing nation, and we are always looking for new ways to discuss, express, and accept differing opinions concerning the issues our nation faces.